People ask a lot of questions about tongue ties. Tongue tie or a tie inside the mouth is basically a restriction of a frenum or your, the skin that holds your mouth together essentially. So you have several, several frenums or frenulums inside your mouth. One, the most common one is under the tongue. There's an, the other common one is you know, in the upper lip here. And then you've got two, one here and one here. There are a couple others in the mouth, but those are the most common ones that get talked about, particularly when it comes to infant um, tongue ties or ties that are restricting things like eating, latching, uh, swallowing, perhaps breathing. So the most common one is under the tongue. The lingual uh, frenum is under the tongue. And to check that, you can check it on yourself first. So you're gonna suction your tongue to the roof of your mouth and you're going to drop your jaw down. So what that looks like mm -hmm, is that. So you're suctioning your tongue all the way to the, to the roof of your mouth. And there are several factors that are gonna determine whether or not you're able to do that. Some people struggle with even the idea of suctioning their tongue. So the way to accomplish that, what you're trying to do is as if you were gonna make a cluck sound. So that's the sound that you're, or the, the motion that you're emulating, but you wanna suction and hold. And then you can see that frenum under your tongue. You can also lift your tongue and see it that way. So we're gonna do this on Valerie here. So go ahead and lift. Yep, so if you just lift, you can see the frenum stretching from the tongue down to the lower palate. If you suction and hold, mm -hmm, you can see how the frenum sticks out just a little bit better. So, so Valerie here has got mm -hmm. a little bit of restriction and I, your restriction is a little bit greater on the left than it is on the right. And you can see that her tongue deviates a little bit to the left, so that indicates a a little bit of increased tension on the left hand side. And then the frenum doesn't protrude nice and straight. Like you wanna see almost like a string in the middle. And when you do this, yep, so it's not quite a string. You can kind of see it in the middle, but it's not real narrow on either sides. And you also wanna see nice smooth caves that go all the way to the back. And you can see that hers come down. So she's got what I would say is a little bit of an anterior tongue tie and a, and a little bit of a posterior tongue tie. So it's tight both in the front and the back your tongue actually attaches in the back of your throat. So it goes all the way back. And so if you can, you know, touch the, the, the tongue to your roof of your mouth, mm -hmm, like that's good. That's, that's an indicator that in the front, it's not that tight. But if you can't suction all the way to the back, and when I say all the way to the back, if you make a g sound where your tongue touches the roof of your mouth for the g sound, that's how far back you should be able to suction your tongue. So if you can suction all the way back, your full length of your tongue to the back of your throat, that's what's up. So I do not have a tongue tie in the front or the back, and I've got a nice protruded frenulum in the front, and then nice smooth caves that go all the way to the back. Okay. When you're doing this at home, do it in front of a mirror. You can check kind of what you've got going on in your own mouth. And then to check your baby's mouth, you can very gently have them on their backs and very gently stick your fingers under their tongues and just gently lift. And if their tongues, their jaws will move easily and you can lift their tongue pretty easily, then you're probably in pretty good shape. But if there's restriction or, you, or, or you're just really unsure what you're, of what you're looking for, I definitely recommend reaching out to either a physical therapist or a lactation consultant, and um, potentially there may be some releases that can be done. This is one of my children. Both, I have twins. Both of my children had ties that were not so much affecting latch, but I could tell that they were tight in their lips. And, um, Rosalind here has a little bit of restriction still in her upper. So we're gonna lift in this upper here. You can see it's just a little bit tight here. It doesn't come down and you can see probably where it was released even, a little bit of uh, scar tissue there. And, uh, but she still has a little bit of tension in this. And what that results in is that her upper lip is a little bit short and she has a hard time with lip sealing, especially at night. You should be sleeping with your lips sealed and breathing through your nose. 
She has a little bit of trouble with that because of the tension here in her upper lip. So let's open here. Let's look at your lower one. Good. So there you can see that one's you know, not restricted at all. Not very prominent as it should be. So this one is nice and loose, but it, she has the tension here. So let's look under your tongue. Open. Yep. And put your tongue. Yeah, there we go. Yep. So you can see her frenum sticking there. Yep. Can you suction your tongue to the roof of your mouth? Mm-hmm. There we go. It's not, well, that's just lifting up, but you can see where she's got some nice lift here. She's not suctioning, but you can see where she's got some nice lift and it goes all the way to the back. So she's got, she's got some good movement in her tongue, but where her tension is, is right in here. Thank you. All right, come on. <laughs> this is Rosalind's twin, Francesca. So Francesca had both buckle, she had a, a lip release and a buckle release. So let's see here. There, yeah, I know, right? It's funny, isn't it? <laughs> relax your lips, relax, relax, relax. There we go. So you can see hers is not as prominent. Her upper tie is not as prominent. Doesn't come quite down as far on her gums. A lot of this is real subtle. She's got, you know, one of her teeth fell out. She's got her little new adult teeth coming in here. And then let me see this. So she's got, you can see her buckle, her uh, frenum's over here. Those are not very prominent. She does not have the same issue with lip closures. Hers are, hers are pretty good. And then can you touch your tongue to the roof of your mouth? Uh -huh. There we go. Yeah, oh yeah, good, good, nice suction. Good, so you can see her frenum's nice and prominent, which is good, it sticks out, it's a real string. And then she's got nice, good caves on either side of her frenum that go all the way back. So she's got a nice, good, mobile tongue here. Thank you. So the other, the other places in which you may see ties that can, uh, that can uh, influence how well the lips seal and how well, especially with latch, how well um, babies are able to, to latch and nurse um, or even um, uh, latch onto a bottle is the tie here and here, the, the front, sorry, excuse me, the fren frenums here and here. So with the, where those are is here, this one in the middle and this one right here. So here in the middle, right there, and here on the side and on the side. In the middle, on the side, on the side. So on either side, either side. So here, 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 and here. So let's see Valerie's here. Yeah. So we've got one in the middle mm -hmm, on the top and one in the middle on the bottom. Good. And lower your jaw all the way. Okay. Good. And then suction. Yep. Okay, and then um, suction again. It kind of deviates off to one side, <laughs> yeah. And then um, upper lip. Mm -hmm. So here, and then buckle ties on either side, yep. And then here, in the middle, and then on either side. If you have a lot of tension in those, you'll see that the frenum attaches all the way down here at the gum line, where it should attach is halfway down. So it, so mine attaches halfway down. Hers also attaches halfway down. And you can see it's kind of halfway down the, uh, the gum line, not all the way down to your teeth. People who have a diastema or a, a gap in their front teeth, oftentimes the reason for that diastema is tension in that upper frontum where it attaches all the way down to the gum line and is actually pulling the teeth apart because of the tension up to the lip. So a lot of times people who have that gap one of the common things that we hear is people will get braces and they get it closed and then it just comes back and they get braces again and it comes back because the, the real problem is the tension in the front of them. The other two places are here and potentially here that can, uh, and if you think about, you know, this motion that babies need to make, this motion, that motion, it's, you know, all of these things, if they're tight, they're not gonna allow that movement of your lips. And so these can be tight too. I'm gonna show you on me here, go here, and here, and here, 
in here. Those should not be as obvious. Like they're not gonna be that kind of string of skin that you see here, here, and under the tongue. They're gonna be a little bit milder or should be. But if they're very tight and restricted, you'll see tension points here where you either can't pull the lip down or it, feel, it just feels very tight and restricted. So let's see what yours looks like. Yep, so you can see these little attachment points. They're very subtle, but there's attachment point here and here, and then same thing on the bottom, attachment point here and here, almost where your, you know, your pointy teeth are, kind of where that, where those teeth are. So, so that's where the ties are. That's kind of what a tie is. It's just restriction of those bits of skin that kind of hold your lips down to your teeth and attach your gums to, you know, your, your lips to your gums, and tension in those can affect your facial movement, your ability to move your tongue, your, the length of your tongue, all of those things, they can, and then that in turn can affect your ability to swallow, it can affect your airway, it can affect your jaw position, it can affect the growth of your mouth and your, your palates, both upper and lower, and all of that can have long-term effects. So this is something that if you, if you're, if your infant is having some issues with latch or, um, maybe even you're noticing some like snoring or something that you're a little bit concerned about with airway definitely get it checked out because it's something that sometimes some a very simple release can can do a world of good and it'll serve them long into their future one of the most important things to know about the jaw is the resting position or neutral position your neutral position is your jaw slightly down and slightly forward as compared to where it is in a clenched position in your neutral position, your tongue is up against your upper palate. It's not suctioned or pressed, but just resting against your upper palate. And your teeth are slightly apart. So in our little guy here, we've got the upper palate is here, the roof of your mouth. Your tongue is resting in your upper palate. And then your teeth are slightly apart. Jaw slightly down, slightly forward, as compared to where it is in a clenched position. Your tongue being in your upper palate serves a couple of purposes, but one of the main things, is particularly in developing children, is that it acts as a natural spacer and a natural widener of the upper palate. You want your upper palate to be wider. It opens the sinus and the airway, which helps with your airway all the way down, diaphragmatic breathing and that whole bit, but it also helps reinforce not having a tongue tie. And if you do have a tongue tie, it's going, or, or ties, it will, pull the jaw down. Mouth breathing will pull the jaw down. It will tighten up the, particularly the back of your tongue. Your tongue attaches way in the back of your throat. And then that will create a situation where you're more now mouth breathing and you're not nose breathing. And then the tongue doesn't act as that natural spacer to the sinus. Like apnea, even in children. Um, and even if your kid doesn't have apnea as a kid, it can be an indicator of the possibility of apnea later in life. Sleep apnea is linked to heart disease and all kinds of not great things. And so this is something that would be useful to get addressed, even in young kids, especially in young kids. The tension in your tongue that's leading to mouth breathing will pull the jaw down, pull the jaw back ever so slightly, can reinforce clenching and grinding. Ha releasing those ties, getting the jaw down and forward, allowing the tongue to be up in that upper palate will help with all of those things with development and the and trickle down effect all the way into later in life a physical therapist is useful to see for kids whether or not you're getting uh releases done on lingual or other frenums a physical therapist can help with postural improvements can help with understanding what neutral position of the jaw is can help with manual therapy and can help teach parents ways to do stretches with kids can help parents with stretches on themselves if you end up getting a release from a dentist that's all really all the dentist is going to do maybe give you some exercises to follow up with but that's when the role of physical therapy is really helpful because we can reinforce those exercises give you more expansive exercises to do both with your kid and for yourself as an adult even if you haven't had a tongue release or, you know a, a friend of release there are still lots of helpful helpful exercises that physical therapy can provide for both addressing snoring, tongue tightness, throat tightness, nose breathing, resting position of the jaw, clenching, grinding, other parafunctions, and so on. So it's really, it's really helpful to check in with a physical therapist and go through some of those exercises, even with your kid.